version of the Gulf Stream was finally published. A prized duplicate has been carefully preserved in Paris in the Department of Charts and Plans in the National Library of France. Department curator Hélène Richard continually marvels over the preciseness of Franklin's drawings. L'une des raisons de la notoriété de cette carte, c'est le fait qu'elle n'ait pas été contredite sur le plan scientifique. Elle a été complétée, elle a été relativisée, mais elle n'a pas été contredite. La, la véracité de cette carte, la réalité de cette carte, euh, en a fait la notoriété. According to Franklin, the Gulf Stream stops somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic. Two centuries later, however, Progress in oceanography enabled scientists to completely and accurately represent the surface of the ocean current. What we now call the Gulf Stream is a powerful surface current whose flow corresponds to 150 times the flow of all the Earth's rivers combined. Driven by the trade winds, its origins lie in the Gulf of Mexico, from which it gets its name. It carries the tropical waters from the Florida Strait to the great banks of the New World. The Gulf Stream then heads eastward, where it splits into several branches, one of which carries its warm waters to the borders of the North Atlantic. It is this North Atlantic drift that one commonly associates with the Gulf Stream, which is largely responsible for the mildness of European winters. But the Gulf Stream's voyage has only just begun. As soon as the tropical waters hit the Arctic Ocean, they cool abruptly and plunge towards the abyssal zone to form a loop known as thermohaline circulation. Then, like an immense conveyor belt that slows down in the ocean depths, it sets out again southward to rejoin the beginning of the Gulf Stream off the American coast. Without these beautiful mechanics, the Inverview Gardens would be a barren moor flattened by winds, and the Breton frigodems would have to break through the ice for their wintertime swims. Don't miss this rendezvous. They'll be here, but just for a few hours, making the most of the rising tide in order to break free of the ocean and reach the river. This is the precise moment when the fishermen of Chiron set sail in pursuit of the Elva. The Elva is the juvenile of the eel that Sebastian has fished in the estuary's turbid waters for nearly 17 years. This tiny silver fish sells for a king's ransom of up to 800 euros a kilo. And for a few thousand elvers, this morning marks the end of an incredible migration. Après le départ, pratiquement aussitôt après être né, quoi, à l'état de l'air. Et puis à mettre à peu près un an pour venir pour atteindre les, les côtes la côte atlantique. Et, et donc en, entre temps, elles se nourrissent et, et elles changent pour devenir et bien, les, 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 les petits alvins qu'on voit. Quoi. Their adventure, however, begins on the other side of the world, off the Florida coast, in the remote Sargasso Sea. These eel larvae, only a few millimeters long, spontaneously respond to nature's mysterious call, issued from the shores of Europe. Barely hatched from their eggs, they embark upon a transatlantic cruise of more than 6,000 kilometers, despite the fact that they can hardly move, much less swim. The only solution for these newborns is to ride the ocean motorway, quite simply drifting along on the Gulf Stream's current as they make their way back to their ancestral river. And these stowaways are not the only ones who benefit from this powerful current of tropical origin. During 
its northbound cruise, the Gulf Stream falls in love with the Norwegian peninsula. And Dan is on a string of islands with the lovely name of Lofoten. Oh, for the happiness of cod and those who fish them. Carl Victor christened his boat after himself. And each year, at the same time, he sails his namesake to the four corners of these islands. The miracle took place a few weeks earlier. Huge schools of scrum, the Arctic cod, have kept their appointment on the shores of Norway. The trawler's first strikes are quite promising. Yet another occasion confirms how much larger Norwegian cod are than their Canadian cousins living across the Atlantic in the cold waters of Labrador. Cod fishing in the Lofotens is more than a thousand years old and is still the island's principal livelihood. Carl Victor never fails to thank the current without which human presence would have been impossible on this archipelago at the northmost edge of the Arctic Circle. Ja, de er klar over det, for det har vi lært i fra barns barneskoler, fra fra barnspenna. Der har vi bestående lært at kolstrømmen er veldig viktig for oss her. Og, og det er jo en evig proces, og det så gjør at vi kan ha, ha en eksistens her. But this eternal process could one day be interrupted.